Good morning, Uplift Church. I love those songs. And when you're just thinking about that love and letting it take over, it it rains. And sometimes, don't you agree sometimes, it takes an outside force. It takes a little extra help to love some people. <laughs> and you love these people. But sometimes you just really need some of God's help. Yeah. And I know you know what we're talking about. You love these people. And sometimes it, it, it may, whether it be uh, family or coworkers, you love these people. You care about them. But sometimes you just need a little, you just need a little extra help. That's what's so great about this day. It's a fun day that we get to show the people that we care about that we love them. And sometimes that can be romantic. Others uh, not. It can be just friendships. Uh, it could be uh, coworkers. And the thing about it is, is that everything around us is relational. Every aspect of our lives is relational. Even to the person that doesn't like people, it's still relational. Every bit of it. Because at some point, whether you have a lots of relationships or very few relationships, you still have relationships. So therefore, everything is relational. And see, last week we talked about the fall in the garden, and about our relationship with God and what was impacted there. But see, it went a little bit further than that because it wasn't just our relationship with God that was impacted from sin. It was our relationship with people. Because Adam and Eve, as we learned last week as well, there was a big change in their livelihood because now they were going to have to work hard. Now there was going to be a burden between them. And now they were going to have to experience, ladies were going to experience an intense labor and this carrying. And then man was going to have to work really hard by the sweat of his brow. And there was also going to be complications. There were going to be adversities, thorns and thistles. It was going to be a lot different. So all this was impacted, not just relationship between people, but also relationship between man and everything created, all of creation. And so when we start looking at the Bible and about love, we can often try to love what we want or think that maybe it's only other people that's affected by this. But see, the thing about it is, is that whenever we look at people, sometimes all we see are the flaws. Well, what about when God looks at us? Well, again, that's what we talked about last week. Are we hiding anything from God? Because if we're hiding something from God, that's a good indication that that is sin. We need to get that out. And so last week, we were really trying to clear the air between us and God. We were trying to restore our relationship where there's nothing, nothing between us. And what about with us and people? It, how is our relationship with people? Do we need to clear the air with people or certain people? Now, I know that it's Valentine's Day, and Amanda just did a fantastic job opening up uh, this morning and really sharing from her heart and uh, God definitely heard our prayer and he really heard our prayer uh, I say ours but particularly a man is in praying for a girl because you know we got four of them and it's so great it's so great so how's your relationship with people how is your love towards people and we're all going to have different response to this but there's times that we really struggle when it comes to relationships and people and a lot of times we look at relationships particularly around valentine's day in a romantic sense while that can be romantic we have relationships all around us whether it be relationships with our parents our friends our neighbors our siblings our children our parents relationships are all around us and that's what makes today so important so today we're not talking about necessarily romance any romantical relationships, we're talking about just people, us and people. And we sometimes have a hard time with that. And see, it's because of man's sin in the garden that really impacted that relationship between each other. So, if I were to ask you, how is your love towards others, what would your answer be? How is your love towards others? Now, the reason why this is so important is because Jesus said himself, well, there's two great commandments. Love God, love others. Love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbors as yourself. 
Love your neighbors as yourself. And so if we're going to do this, we kind of need to kind of look at ourselves and say, okay, how am I doing in this department? And most of us will say, you know what? I'm okay between us and God. It's everybody else that i got issues with. Well, how is your love towards others? If you were to judge yourself on loving others, how would you rank yourself? Let me ask it to you in a different question. How would you describe your love for others? How would you describe your love for others? Would you say that it is forgiving? It is gracious? Would you say it is conditional? Would you say it's conditional? See, we, sometimes we put these requirements. How would you describe your love towards others? Would you say you're doing a good job or a not so good job? Or you say, I'm doing good at certain people, but not others. But see, the thing about it is, what Jesus said, love God and love others. He didn't say only a certain group of people. He didn't say love only your family or love only your kids. He said love others. Others, that's my everybody. I'm not slapping you silly, I'm saying love everybody. Love them all. Love them all. And so what we want to look at today is, is this love that we've been asked to give others. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because what Apostle Paul does here is that he really gives us a great picture of what love is. And it's so profound because it's love not like what movies or books give us. It's something completely different. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I, I really love this. The first song that we sung today, this is where it's drew from. 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to read these first three verses, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting with verse 1, it says, If I speak human or angelic languages, but do not have love, I am a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all the faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I donate all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body in order to boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Now, this is really powerful when we start looking at this, especially from the faith point of view, because we just spent the entire month of January talking about faith, having faith greater than a mustard seed. Well, Apostle Paul puts it right here, says that even if you have all the faith to move those mountains, but you don't have love, well, you've missed it. Missed it. I am nothing without love. Now, we could look at what's going on all around uh, our world right now over the past several years. And we would probably all say, you know what? We all just need to get along. We all just need to love others. Okay, well, let's go back. How are you doing at loving others? How would you describe your loving others? Because right here it's saying, listen, you can have all the gifts. You can have all the talents. You can have all the abilities in the world. You could give to charities. You could donate all your money away. But if you don't love, you are without. You are without. You are lacking. You have gained nothing. Church, love is serious. Love is serious to God. And therefore, love is very serious to others. And we have been commanded to love God and love others. That we would love God with what? Our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that we would love our neighbors as ourselves. So we've been given this challenge to do this, to carry it out, practice this. Oh, man. So God is serious about love. And to show you this, I, I've got three verses, okay, that I'm just going to put together here uh, on this screen. Three verses crammed together. So John 3, 16, 1 John 4, 7, and 1 John 4, 8. Read this. This is the first part. Of John 3.16. For God so 
loved. And you know the rest of that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? Look at 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. 1 John 4, 8. Anyone who does not know, I'm sorry, anyone who does not love does not know God. So if you're not loving others, do you really know God? That's what he's saying here. Because God is love. So what he's saying here is, is that what God has created is this love and that if you know him, you will love others. But see, there's a, there's a complication in there. Because we all have a different idea, a different depiction of what love is. So if I were to ask you to describe your love for others, what would you say? What would you say? Now this is very important. Because as we start looking at love, and as we start looking and examining our love for others, we could probably see a trend. See, it's so easy to love people when they love you back. It's easy to love somebody when they're behaving and acting like you want them to. But what about to those that don't? See, is your love conditional? Does your love have requirements? Is your love for others based upon performance? Because here's three verses that God's love is not based upon performance. It's not based on your talents or abilities. Because again, what did John 3.16 say? Oh, see God gave us the greatest example of he so loved us that he gave his son. It wasn't based on a condition. And church, this is the example that we've been set before us. That we would love others, period. 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 (laughs) This is a a while back uh, that I was telling Amanda, I was like, you know what? Uh, I I can't remember which one of the girls was like, I I like, maybe not all of them, I just said, I like our girls. She's like, what? I said, I like them. She's like, great, let's keep them like it was a pet. And they're like, no, that's not what I mean. Like, I love them regardless but i like them too like i like being around them i don't have to get away like i i really love them and i really like them too i like being around them i like spending time with them and it does not mean that they get everything right all the time they're not perfect and they also know that their daddy is not perfect either we're not so then why are we asking other people to be perfect before we love them So then what is love? What is love? Look at verse 4. Here's what tells us what love is. So God is serious about love. That's what we learn in these first verses. And in verse 4 we have the definition. A perfect description of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Let's just pause right there for a minute. How is your patience towards other people? Do you have road rage? And sometimes we, we really look at others and want them to behave and react in a certain way. Love is patient. Love is kind. How is your kindness towards others? How is your patience towards others? Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not conceited. Does not act improperly, is not selfish, is not provoked, does not keep a record of wrongs. Wow, we could go on and on for right there, right? does not keep a record of wrongs. What that means is, is love is forgiving. How many times have you had a discussion, I'm not going to call it an argument, I'm going to say a discussion with someone that you care about, only to have brought back up a record of something that done a few years ago. Oh yeah, I remember two years ago when you, da 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 Love keeps a record of no wrongs. And church, God has already set the example for us. When he forgives us for, of our sins, where does he cast our sin to? Where's it cast into? Into the sea of what? Say this to me. He cast our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Gone. Separated from us. As far as the east is from the west, our sins are never more to be remembered. And here we have a description of love that says, does not hold on to that. Does not keep a record of wrongdoings. Church, that's forgiving. That is forgiving. 
That means we forgive someone. And then we move on. He goes on. Verse 6. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in truth. And what this means is that when someone has a fault, when someone um, has a, a bump in the road, that we don't relish in that, that we don't find comfort in that or joy or go, oh, yeah, look at them. But what does it do? Look at verse 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. And this is the first part of verse 8. Love never ends. Never ends. Now, in these four verses, we have some details of expression of love, the patience and the kindness. Doesn't, we have a whole lot of things that it's not. So we have a few things of what love is. Love is patient, love is kind. But we have a lot of things that love is not. It is not envy. It's not boastful. It's not conceited. It doesn't act improperly. It's not selfish, not provoked. Does not keep a record of wrongdoing. Finds no joy in unrighteousness. But here's the, some more part of what love is. It rejoices in truth. It bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endure all things. Love never ends. Now, we come to the part where the rubber meets the road. This is with you now. How does this description of love line up with your idea of what love is? How does this description of love line up with your idea of love? How is it? Now, we, we really need to spend some time there to really meditate on these things. We really need to examine this description of love, of what it is and what it is not, and see how our expression of love lines up with this. Church, what I am not telling you to do is to compare your love actions to someone else's love actions. We can always look at someone else's kids and go, man, I wish my kids would act and behave that way. It's not a comparison. Love, here's my own words, love doesn't compare to others. Love is all giving without anything in return. That's the example that we've been given. So in these four verses, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to verse 8, we have a very detailed list of what love is and what it is not. And the question is, how does your idea of love line up with this? Now see, you've probably got some good ideas about this love and maybe some areas that you need to work on. And church, we know that the world needs love. But my question is, is how are you doing at showing this love? I have a flashlight here. It's a very small pin flashlight. Now, I know that we're up on the stage and we've got these, these lights on. So with all this brightness, I want to ask you, is this light, is it on? Is this light on? Is there any question? Would you look at this, this flashlight and go, uh, maybe if it's a really dim light. All right, now I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to shine it away so it don't blind you on the camera. There's no doubt that this light is on. No doubt. And church, this is the way it is with love. Your love to others. Your love for the world. It should be able to be seen. The expression of your love. Your love for others. And church, I'm not talking about romance. I'm talking about your love for people. God's people. And I'm not talking about Christian. I'm talking about all humans. Because we are all God's people. He created us all. Regardless of skin color or country or origin. God created us all. And he loved us so much that he gave his son. And now we have been commanded to do what? Love one another. And how do we do that? Well, from verses 4 to 8. That's the depiction of how we love others. That's the depiction of how we love others. And church, God is very serious about love. We know this from John 3.16. We know it from the greatest example of love that's ever been given. 
So my question to you is, when we look at you, do we see your love light shine? Do we see it shine out? When people look at you, do they see God's love in you? Or do they see some of those other descriptions of love of what it's not? Do they look at you, and is that what they see? Do they see some of that ugliness? Or do they see the patience, the kindness? Do they see that the, doesn't keep a record of wrongdoings? Do they see that never-ending, never-failing, never-giving-up love? See, we have a tendency to put requirements on love. Like, oh, we'll say, oh, I love everybody, everybody. Uh Uh-oh, here comes so-and-so. Let's put that baby away. I don't want to love them. And as soon as they pass by, you're like, you see somebody else, oh, hey, love you, mean it. See, a lot of times with the love, we're very quick to turn it off and on depending on who we're around. But that's not what we've been commanded to do. We've been commanded to do what? Love others. Will you please turn with me to one more place in the Bible? It's 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And this is what you'd refer to as one of the little books of John just before Revelation. 1 John chapter 4. Because God has given us this love and it's been made to grow and make itself known to us so good. First John chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 9. It says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. So this means that we're going to live out John 3.16. He said, we've got the love, the light of the world. We've got this love, okay? All right. Verse 10, in this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in, abides in us and his love is perfected in us. And church, what he's saying is, is when, when we have our love flashlight on, when people look at us, they see God. They see it, that love, because he first loved us. He first loved us. And now we've been commanded to love others. Church, I'm talking about your spouse, your kids. I'm talking about your family. I'm talking about your neighbor. There's no performance love. We just love. This is what we've been commanded to do. Love. Love others. That we'd forgive. That we'd move on. And I love what he says here. If verse 11 is probably my favorite in this passage. If God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Church, what can you say to that? If God loved you so much to die, to send his son to die for your sins, then surely you ought to be able to love others. That's what he's saying. Look at verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit that lives in us. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Verse 16, so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this... Is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment? Because as he is all, as he is so, also we in this world. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. 
If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Church, we have been commanded to love. Is your love light on? Is it on? When people look at you, do they see it or do they see something dull? They don't see that love. Church, we've been commanded to love. And in 1 Corinthians 13 and in 1 John chapter 4, we get some great description of love and what it looks like in the real world. What it looks like practiced out, carried out in our lives. Do you love others? How are you doing at loving others? I love these verses. How is it? Do you put requirements on it? What about your spouse and your kids? How is your love for them? Do do you fight for them? Or do you fight with them? You see the difference? Well, we really need to really examine 1 Corinthians 13 to really understand the details of what love really is. And maybe this has hit you really hard today because we have a great experience at loving some people, but we have a really difficult time loving other people. So today, to to really make this personal, in what way do you need to work on your love towards others? And see, church, this can be in your romance, this could be in your marriage, this could be in your family towards whether it be kids or, or parents. What areas in your life do you need to work on towards loving others? And you may be like, you know what, I'm I'm good. Well, see, you've got to be honest here. Because the example that we've been given is that we would love us all. We would love people without any requirements, regardless of any performance, Regardless of any of their actions, we're going to love. We're not going to keep a record of it. We're going to love. So you can't, you can say, nope, I'm good. But the fact of the matter is, we all need to be exercising this love and patience and kindness. This enduring. That's the part that we really struggle with, isn't it? I'm going to love you until you mess up, you know, once. And we're going to talk about it. And then, all right, you get two tries. I'm going to give you three tries and and then that's it. We'll endure up until that point. But see, the example we've been given is that we'd be continuing this enduring because that's what God does with us. He loves us. He loves us. So what area in your life do you need to work on love? What area of your life do you need to work on in love? And I want you to think about that for a moment. What area in your life do you need to work on when it comes to love. Is it one of those things where you turn it off and on? Maybe it's certain people. Maybe it is a specific area. What area of your life do you need to work on? Because here's what we want to do. Is any of those areas that maybe we're struggling with, loving others, or maybe a certain person, or maybe a certain group of people, We want to take that to the Lord in prayer. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, to go ahead, wherever you're at right now. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to just talk to the Lord about this one thing, maybe even meditate on this one thing. What do you need to work on when it comes to love? What area of your life do you need to work on when it comes to love? What people is it that you need to work on? What people is it you need to bring to the Lord when it comes to loving them? Because we want to give that to the Lord. Do you have what it is? Do you know what area in your life 
you're struggling with when it comes to loving others. Patience, kindness, enduring, forgiving. Maybe it's certain people. Maybe uh, you and your family's not been getting along. Maybe there is, uh, maybe there's a ways between you and a sibling. Or maybe even between you and a parent. Maybe it goes beyond the family. Maybe you and a neighbor exchanged some words. Maybe you and a co-worker had a falling out. What is it that you need to bring to the Lord? Say, Lord, I need help loving people in this area. I want to talk to you just for a minute. Right now, would you take that to the Lord right now in prayer? I want to pray with you and for you. But just as Amanda said earlier, you're the one who's going to have to take it to the Lord, and you're the one who's going to have to work this through and have to leave that there with Him. I, I, I can help lead you there, but you're going, to have to, you're going to have to let Him take control. Do you know what area in your life you need to work on with love? Because we're going to take it to the Lord right now. Father, we pray for those right now that are watching. God, that you would help them in this certain areas of their life as they bring this before your presence. And be very specific in their prayer. God, I pray that you would touch them and help them in this area. That they can love others in the specific area that they're struggling with. God, I pray that you would bless them and help them to overcome and to practice this love. As you continue to pray, we talk about this specific area. But now I want to talk to maybe, maybe a specific person person or a specific people that you're struggling with to love because we what we want to do we want to take those people to the Lord and and also we're praying for you that you would love these people who is it right now what relationships is it right now that you're struggling with maybe it is your marriage that you and your spouse you're just on different terms maybe you and your spouse are being going through some trying times Here's an opportunity for you to pray together and to seek the Lord together. Maybe it's your whole family. You're praying for direction and guidance. Or what if you called your kids up or, or gathered your, your small kids together and pray together, Lord, help us to live a life that would be bright mm, and shining for you. That when people see us, they could see Jesus. They could see that love of God manifested in us. Church, what people is it that you need to pray with or pray for that you're struggling when it comes to love? Over these past few months, there's been a lot of certain groups, whether it be political or whatever. Lord, help me to love others. I want you to pray, and I'm going to help you. But there's specific people. We want to be specific. Not just general prayer. We want to be a specific prayer on who you're struggling with. Or who you need God's help with to love. It could be an individual. It could be a group. It could be many people. But you're the one who's going to have to give those people to the Lord. So I want to pray for you. As you lay these people down. Lord's feet and pray for your strength as you start practicing this love and let your love shine. Father, there's no doubt that there's times in our life it's hard to love certain people. We get uh, all caught up in the moment. We get our feelings hurt. Uh, words get said. Emotions take over. And oftentimes, God, when that happens, we think that people don't love us. Help us, Father, to be a bright, shining light in the others. Father, we pray for those that are maybe hard for us to love. And we lay them at your feet. We ask, God, that you do a mighty work in them. Not to change them, but to change our love towards them. And God, that you would just reveal yourself in them. And that they may know you the way that we know you through your son, Jesus. The greatest example that has been set before us to love others. And right now, Father, we pray for them. 
Right now, I just want you to lift up those people to the Lord. If it's a specific person, name names. They're hard to love. Specific group, hard to love. Neighbor, co-worker, hard to love. Whoever it is, give those to the Lord right now. Just lift those names up. Be specific. Now we're going to pray for you. God, I pray for us as individuals. That you would help us, Father, to love those that we may be struggling with. Help us, God, to be that example that when people see us, they can see your love light shining all around us. Father, this does, this does not mean that we take abuse. This does not mean that we are to be walked all over. This means that we're to be an example. Help us, Father, as we practice what's being carried out here in 1 Corinthians 13 and in 1 John 4, that we would love others. Following the greatest example that this world has ever seen. When you so loved us that you gave us your son. As you continue to pray, I want to pray for you and whatever it is you've got going on in your life right now. Would you please just allow me to pray for you? Father, I pray for those right now that sometimes we, we don't like Valentine's Day and what it is and what it represents. And we have other things going on in our life that are more pressing. And God, I just pray for those that are struggling today with life, with their health, with their marriage. Uh, with their children. God, I pray that you would just bless them and help them, Father, to be bold with their faith and just to walk with you. Father, I pray for us all that as we go out today and this week in our life through carrying out all our responsibilities and our routines, God, that people could see you in us, that they would see your light in us because you first loved us. Father, I thank you so much for your word today. Oh, it's so convicting. Forgive us, Father, for the times in which we are selective with our love, that we try to love others based upon performance, that we want them to behave and act a certain way before we'll love them. And just help us, God, to love everybody, regardless of any background, that we would just love them the way you do. For you sent your Son to die for the whole world. And now we've been given a great example to love others regardless. Father, I thank you so much for Amanda and her words this morning. Help us, Father, as we pray this prayer and we lay these things down. God, that we would leave them there and that we would work on them. Surrendering ourselves unto you. Allowing your Holy Spirit to continue perfecting that work in us. Because we know that once you start it, you're not going to quit until it's perfected. I'm so glad, Father, that you are still working on me. Now bless us, Father, as we leave here today that our lights will shine bright. That when people look at us, they don't see our faults, our failures, but they just see Jesus in us. God, we love you and we praise you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give God some praise wherever you're at? God, I love you so much. And I pray.